On this week's episode of the Universe of Magic podcast, we're going to introduce you to one of the most spectacular people on this planet Earth. And we're also going to talk about Adventures by Disney, because you need to know about it. Up next. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Universal Magic Podcast. I'm John, I'm one of your hosts, and I'm joined, well, I think the daycare monster got her again. (laughs) What's up, Alyssa? I'm here! (laughs) Poor girl. I'm here. Ursula, I dressed Uh, up as Ursula for Mickey's Not So Scary, I guess I should have dressed up as Ariel. (laughs) That's that's Disney karma for you. And then, of course, there's Jeff. Hey guys, girls, how's it going? And I, I am over the moon about our guest tonight. A couple months, well, back in January, I approached her um, with an idea for a podcast, and this woman just exudes energy, and I'm so pleased <laughs> to have her on. Leslie Real, the owner of Moment, uh, Moments of Magic Travel. How's it going, Leslie? Good. How are y'all? Good. Thank so you. We, we just see a little head there next to you. Yeah. Can you introduce he's, your guest? He's, he's dodging the camera. Cove Real, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Passy and all. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's got his Mickey's. He's got his Mickey's PJs on. He's, yeah. he's pretty decked out. He's so got some this. So this has been honestly, and the the coolest thing about you, Leslie, and I, I know you're probably going to blush, and I don't care. Um, is you just inspire everyone you meet. Like I left that meeting in January, just like ready to go. Like you, you gave me your blessing and you're like, go for it, you know? And that's honestly what I love about you. And like, you are truly self-made. So I think the obvious question is how did moments of magic travel get started? Well, you're too kind, first of all. And, you know, I'm not anybody but, you know, the person who has helped form an amazing team. So everything Mm -hmm. that's awesome about this company and this place and this way, it comes down to the agents that are a part of it. And together we make up this incredible family team that, you know, is going to raise the roof (laughs) on all things Disney, (laughs) you know, from experiences to sales to client interactions, you name it. That's, that's what I'm most Mm -hmm. proud of what we do. But to answer your question, um, funny enough, I, I have had many different hats throughout my life and my careers. Um, I have six children. (laughs) So back when I started MOMT, I had come off of really just kind of being a retired stay at home mom. Um, I had worked in uh, the nonprofit industries, worked for United Way for a while, um, then worked in medicine in various positions in pharmaceutical sales, which I also believe Mm. to this very day, as, as challenging as a position as it is, and it's very different today than it was decades ago when I was in it. Um, I do believe they have some of the best sales training in the world, but that's another story for another day. Mm. Um, but worked in pharmaceuticals for you know quite a long time, specializing in neurology. And then I ended up retiring to raise my kids. I have always had a love for Disney, so I started um, assisting with putting together Disney trips and planning and helping out a couple of other people. And it was one of those things where I woke up one day and said, I just really want to take this to the next level. And I really have a passion for this. My kids love Disney. I love Disney. Who doesn't love living in the bubble? Mm -hmm. Um, And I really decided I wanted to put something together that I could grow and cultivate, you know, do alongside other people was always my goal, having a team. Um, Hopefully, maybe someday one of my kids, we'll see. (laughs) Who knows? Or one of our agent's kids, which we actually have a few of those already. Knock, knock, Jeff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're joining the team as well. (laughs) So we're so lucky to have those, you know, those little nuances. But it was something that really grew out of my passion 
for travel, that's obviously number one. Um, passion for Disney travel specifically, and really just wanting to do something that I could grow as a mom and be able to do alongside my children. And, you know, it evolves with them. I've gone through the gamut mm -hmm. of putting together and being, you know, an expert on everything from pregnancy in the parks to breastfeeding in the parks to the parks with toddlers and where are the best lavatories? What, you know, what's the secret to not freaking out a two-year-old when you're potty training in Disney? And I can see Alyssa smiling at that. Those are all the cool little things that our agents through our own experiences and the shared experiences of the team that we can share with our guests. So I think that that's just one of the things that was an organic grow for this company. And now looking at it, you know, my kids mm. run the gamut from 17 to five and a half months. So even now we get to see all these different layers of, you know, what family travel looks like, whether it's multi-generational, whatever mm. the, you know, whatever it may be. But you know, as Walt says, it all started with a mouse. For me, it all started, mm. you know, with a dream for family. But family, mm. as I've described it, not just the family you're born into, but the family that you create. Mm -hmm. I, I like to jump on that because when I was looking to do this and looking around the internet, one of the things that attracted me when I actually spoke, I think it was Nancy first and then Cindy and then Leslie. I think you get the ones that make it past them when we're going through that. I I always got a sense of this is a very family-oriented agency. And that's what I was looking for. I wanted somewhere where I could bounce my ideas off of, share my, share my information, and feel like I was part of something that was, you know, family oriented. So when you talk about that, that was one of the things that really attracted me. I guess, I think I'm five years old now with you now, Leslie. That's crazy to think. I think it was back in 2017 when I when I started or 16 the end when I interviewed in 17. Yeah. So it's been a really fun five years. I can't say enough about you and the company and how much fun I've had and, and how much I've learned actually. You know, I, I prided myself on knowing a lot about Disney when we had those interviews, but man, have I learned a lot since being here through the agents or yourself and just, you know, through this experience. So it's been fun. And now we've got your daughter here. <laughs> Look at it girl. Yes. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Now. Yeah. My, my daughter has become an agent and Alyssa, you got to meet her mm -hmm. and Leslie met her at conference and she's kind of the little techie queen and, and, and social media queen. She's been helping me um, with my social media and attracting people. And she just said the other day, I think I'm going to start doing the training. I'm going to, talk to Leslie soon and maybe start the training and, and, and go for it because she's really enjoying it. So I love that. And you know, Leslie, I, sorry, I'm trying not to talk too much about it, but I really felt like uh, before conference, before getting to meet everybody in person, it really felt like I had known everybody on all this time. And then actually getting to see them in person, I felt like we just picked off up like we were old friends like we had always known each other for our entire I life. totally agree I feel like that yeah. we see that so much our agents like so many of y'all are like this and I yeah. freaking love it because mm -hmm. that's yeah. always been the goal was you know to create an environment where it's you know it's all for one we're all here for this common mm -hmm. goal working together which I just think is so cute so yeah cool. we've been uh so a bunch of Asians and I went to uh, Mickey's Not So Scary together, and we still are joking about this, where we were asking, oh, where's that corn cake everybody is raving about? And someone said, oh, it's Pecos Bells. And without even a flinch, we all just started walking that way. We didn't have to say, oh, what way do we go? Oh, does anyone know where it is? We all just went, and we were all joking afterwards. Like, th it was so nice just to be with fellow Disney gurus who just, like, get it. And it really was. We left. I felt like we're still all talking since conference, what was that, three, four weeks ago already. So it's so good. You really have built a family within this agency for sure. And I think that that can go to be said about, you know, like the podcast, like, you know, Jeff joined uh, the podcast and it's immediate, like to where, you know, we're basically on the same page with stuff. And I think that's part of the family atmosphere. So. Awesome. I think it definitely, yeah, it, it, it has, hopefully impacted everybody who's on our team and will continue to do so where we all see that, you know, as we have that feeling when we come in, so too we share it with those who come in behind us. That's mm -hmm. our goal. Fingers crossed. So one of, one of the things that I wanted to ask, yeah, say so one of the things that I wanted to ask is, 
you know, we just came back from conference and we obviously see Disney, you know, like a flower continuing to open up after a rough couple years for the travel industry in, in general. What what is like what does the future look like for you, Leslie, as far as what you want to do with Moments of Magic? Is it do we plan to, you know, grow in different ways with Disney? I mean, what what is what is your long term vision for it? Most definitely. And sorry, I'm looking for a pacifier here. Here we go. I think, you know, that's a great question. We're <laughs> seeing Disney kind of emerge from her slumber of COVID. Um, and it's been a slow emergence in, in many in many ways. You know, there are certain levels of it that happened quickly. But then there were others that have just taken a significant amount of time to get us to where we're at today and to keep us going. So I think it's something where, you know, what we want to see the company do is continue to grow and adapt to the ever-changing high, the ever-changing world that Disney is now a part of. Because let's be honest, mm -hmm. travel today looks a little different than it did a few years ago. So the company's got to learn how to look at that environment, adapt to it, grow merge, change, whatever, you know, whatever wording you want to use to describe that, we've got to adapt in order to grow. But I think that the key word there is growth. We want to continue to grow sales for the company. We want to continue to grow our client base. And most importantly, we want to continue to invest in our agents and grow our agent base. I think that those are all critical components for the company and its success and its growth and where we would like to see it continue its trajectory onward and upward. You know, we're an agency that has a really good standing within our lead vendors program, which is Disney, um, and their program that is mm -hmm. publicly known is called the Earmark Program. We're a gold level agency right on the cusp of being platinum. And, you know, some of those numbers might change as Disney reevaluates what's what it's doing with that program in the next year or so. But regardless, there are other components that once they come back into our ability to present them to our guests, like the dining plan, huh? <laughs> once those components come back, you know, that revenue is just going to, you know, push us skyward, onward, upward. Um, so I think that we're really starting to see some of that growth within the industry and those those changes that are still there. That still Things are still looking a little different. And I don't know that they're ever necessarily going to look exactly the way that they did prior to the pandemic. I think that there's a large layer of this where we're getting used to a whole new environment in the world of travel. And that's OK, too. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a, a few things that I think we need to see some shifts with mainly dealing with, you know, things like housekeeping and frequency of that. And that's not just a Disney thing. It's a it's across the board. But I think that we're also seeing some things that are really positive, which are resorts taking a much more meaningful approach to overall sanitation in general. You know, everything from Disney The Wish. She's got this amazing new elevator system where you don't even have to put your finger on a button and make a contact that, you know, of any sort. It's done just by proximity. So those changes that have come about as a direct result of this, of what we just came out of, I mean, those are pretty cool things. So as we continue to, to merge forward with all of these changes, our key will be growth in all of those avenues. And, and one of the things you mentioned in there and I had here to, to ask about is the, the classification that we have as an earmarked agency. I don't yeah. think a lot of viewers that, that watch us and in general, you know, the, the Disney travel concierge know what really what that means. So being an earmarked agency is really all important when you're dealing with not only the, the you know, the Disney travel agents that we are, but anybody that's going to help you book your Disney trip, you want somebody who's earmarked. Can you kind of just mention or talk a little bit about what earmarked really means and how a lot of agencies don't even have that? Yeah, that's a designation that we worked really hard for, you know, back in the early days of the company. We actually became an earmarked agency. Um, we were one of the quickest shots to the earmarked designation, according to our BDM at the time, um, that they had seen in a long time. So the earmarks designation is a designation that stands for basically being in what the public would see, um, all of our guests, is that we are an authorized Disney vacation planner. 
So that never applies specifically to any one of our agents, meaning our team is not comprised of authorized Disney vacation planners, our agency as a whole. So again, that team, our collective, our family, Moments of Magic Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner. That's a designation that is given direct from Disney and it has different tiers that are part of the program that designates that agency's, you know, revenue and growth within the Disney branded portfolio. There's five brands under that umbrella. So it's Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, and Aulani, a resort and spot in Ko'olina, Hawaii. So all of those together comprise that Disney branding umbrella that lean towards the designation of being an earmarked agency and the agency being an authorized Disney vacation mm -hmm. planner. It's a good way for you to know that Disney is, you know, you're with an agency that is significantly producing with Disney and therefore has Disney's attention. And that's something that we hope will instill in our guests, you know, a layer of trust because they know that it means that when you get to the level that we're at, we've been around for a long time. We're coming up on our 10 year anniversary and that, you know, those years of experience really help us to, yeah, really help us to continue crafting vacations, you know, working towards our guests, creating memories that they're going to have for a lifetime. So, yeah. And it, it's kind of an obvious question, though, like, is I, like I get approached, well, I'm just going to go to Disney. Uh, no, you should hire a travel agent. And it's obvious because, like, you know, I, I've been with other, you know, travel agencies and Moments of Magic Travel has a different approach. Like we we give you a game plan to tackle the parks like that's something that we do. You know, we have, you know, it, basically, you know. I have to say we have some of the hardest working agents that I've ever met personally that know the property better than I do, <laughs> you know? So I think that like, that's that just true. goes to say <laughs> to the family that you've grown, you know, I mean, so. No, the cool thing about our team is so like, we, you, know, you know, we've got such a five brand. Yeah. Sorry. The cool thing is with our team, we've got such no, a, go, you know, go ahead, great go ahead. group of people, ge even geography wise that we've really got someone in the parks mm -hmm. almost every day of the year, which is really cool. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether somebody's there vacationing or somebody local is there, we've got somebody in the parks almost every day. So I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the great, great thing about us agents, you know, is that we are taking care of all five brands, you know, all of us and we have people that are obviously a little bit more experienced than others and we rely on them so every single one of our clients and families you know in the background they are treated the same way whether they have the more experienced one with this brand we we go to that extra mile to make sure that they know that we are going to take care of every one of their needs um one brand that you mentioned here and i'd like to kind of segue into it unless Alyssa, john you guys go are for it. um you know, any more go questions for it. one of the brands that you mentioned is the adventures by disney brand which to me is a very, is my favorite, you know, of the brands just because I've been able to partake in several of those trips. Um, I think we agents kind of, you know, look at that one as a little bit as the, the, the unicorn, if you want to call it that for, you know, booking, because it is a little bit more specialized brand and there's generally a certain type of family that, that books in there. But having been on several trips and Leslie, I know you've been on several of the trips too, it's really a unique brand, so much different than the other four from Disney. Um, it's it's not so much, you know, it doesn't have the Disney touches and flair in there, but it's not Disney in your face. You don't have all the characters, but rather you have the ability through Disney's eyes, through their awesome agents, to see the world and to experience maybe those little Disney flares, the touches, maybe this is where the castle was inspired from. There's so many really neat things about Adventures by Disney that I would love to hear what you think of it. And then maybe we could talk a little bit about, you know, um, that unique brand and, and what it brings. ABD, as we call Adventures by Disney, her, her little nickname is ABD, is hands down my favorite brand in the entire umbrella. And it, did I just say that against Walt Disney World? <gasps> it really... <laughs> I said I think, it. <laughs> I think that, you know, let's, let's be honest here. Walt Disney World and Disneyland have created a red carpet that have allowed Adventures by Disney to exist. Because part of its mm -hmm. existence is its 
VIP experience. And that VIP experience comes from the Disney name, the Disney brand. We wouldn't have that without the parks. So, you know, they're all, you know, it, they're all completely tied and linked to one another and very intricate, intricate, intricately woven. So it's definitely, it maintains my heart though, as my favorite brand across the portfolio for a variety of reasons. You know, from a sales standpoint, um, our biggest guests and who come to experience an adventure tend to be our cruise line guests. So the majority of guests who go on an adventure for the first time do so after having already experienced a Disney Cruise Line vacation. So that's it's just an interesting statistic with the group as it you know relates to who is traveling on these experiences. Another interesting fact about ABD is that it has the highest recidivism rate of any product in the five brand folio. So that means that more people, mm -hmm. granted it's a very different number of people who experience an adventure versus how many even walk into a Disney park on any given day. But per, you know, per brand, there are more people who once they experience an adventure by Disney, they go on it again. That percentage is the highest across the brand more so do that than return to a park. Again, you know, you're comparing apples mm. to oranges in terms of the numbers, but it's still a fascinating piece of information when you look at, well, why is that? What is it about that brand that people love that, not even the brand, the experience, what is it about that that they love so much that makes them do it again and again and again and again? And I think that in my opinion, if I had, if I had to boil that down to a very you know, short answer, it would be trust, experience, not experience in terms of, you know, people's time on the ground, but the experience that you are having hands on when you're on that adventure, trust, experience mm. and expertise. I think that, mm. you know, what makes Jeff, you talked about the fact that it, you know, you get to see what inspired a castle, what inspired you know, a lot of the things that Walt has brought to life. It's not just what inspired that. It's about, you know, looking at a town like in Germany, Rottenburg Ob the Tower, and walking down the cobblestone streets of the very inspiration that Walt had for Pinocchio. So it's not just mm -hmm. even looking at that inspiration. It's walking those streets and going, oh, absolutely. I can see 100%. This is Geppetto's village. Um, mm -hmm. It's an incredible experience. Then it's something as incredible as going to, sorry, guys, as going to Italy and having an experience at the Sistine Chapel and knowing that everybody else spent their day lined up for hours. I mean, the wait times at the Sistine Chapel can be six to eight hours to get in on a crazy day. And knowing mm -hmm. that the Adventures by Disney group has no part in any of that waiting, but gets taken in for a private tour at night. And we're allowed to take photos, mm -hmm. which you can't do during the yeah. day. There are so many restrictions on you know the general population. Those beautiful experiences come from the Disney name being as strong as it is. And there are, mm -hmm. you know, experiences that it doesn't matter. We sell all guided tours, you know, really around the globe. Adventures by Disney can get mm -hmm. our guests into more places in more unique ways than any other brand simply because of the name. Um, I remember my agents were shocked when we went to... Um, Versailles in France, you know, there's Viking tours, there's talc, there's everybody up lined up. And I remember, you know, it was my gosh, if you saw it, we're talking thousands deep, the lines to get into Versailles. And our guide just goes, let's go, holds up the paddle and we walk right up to the front. It was like the seas <laughs> parted. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen because I was like, what, like, how are we going to get through this? And they just part. <laughs> like, I can't even explain it. That's the Disney difference. There's just, it's incredible experiences on these adventures where perhaps you're seeing things that are the same as what you might see on a different tour, but I guarantee you, you're going to see them differently. I guarantee yeah. you the experience is going to be ever so different and it's going to be something that you're going to remember forever. It's just, it's such an incredible brand. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's the power of the paddle. You were just describing the power of the paddle. When that paddle got held up, I, I agree. It's kind of like, we know we're going in and we're going to go in before everybody else. 
And what I would call that is, um, even to go farther than what Leslie said, it's almost the exclusivity that you get with the Disney brand. Um, I, I can attest to exactly what she's talking about. I can remember going into the Sistine Chapel, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. There was only like 35 of us. And I had watched videos before we went on this trip on YouTube of people who had snuck video and they're not supposed to. They had taken video, they had a GoPro on their chest, and it's just wall to wall. It felt like just like you couldn't move in there. Mm -hmm. And here we are, 35 of us in the Sistine Chapel. I remember going to the middle of the chapel, laying on the floor on my back, and sitting there for almost 35 minutes taking pictures of every angle. I mean, it was amazing. You know, it brought tears to my eyes. I remember when we done the France trip, getting there bright and early in the morning and going to the Eiffel Tower before it was even open to the general public. Mm-hmm. You know, and she described and going Germany. underneath it and into its mechanical. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. Yep. And then she described, you know, when we went to the walled city of Rotenburg, you know, and seeing the actual fountain that is in Epcot in the Germany Pavilion, but the real one that was inspired by it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that exclusivity and those stories. And for me, the thing that I really enjoy the most is the connections that you get, not only with the families you're with, but with the guides that, that are with you. You know, you always have a Disney um, uh, guide that is from the United States for that connection and, and I guess you call it language barrier or anything else that you're worried about. There's always a stateside guide that leads the trip. And then a very close second would be that, that in-country guide that who's kind of secondary helps out. But they're more the local experts. They make sure that everything locally is getting done for you and getting taken care of. Mm. It's just an amazing, amazing, amazing part of our company that I agree with Leslie. Once you take one, you take another. You know, I've been on, gosh, you know, more than six, seven trips on Adventures by Disney. I know Leslie's probably been on just as many. And, you know, China. We went over to China in 2018. It was a 12-day adventure. And then we done the Japan one after and it was incredible. The the places that we went, not just by bus, like we did when we did the Europe trips, was all by bus, but the the places that we went by plane in China. Like we would get up in the morning, jump on a plane, go see the Terracotta Warriors, jump right back on the plane, go back to Beijing, and and you're there for dinner. It kind of felt like your royalty uh, mm-hmm. on some of these trips because of the way that you're taken care of, from you know making sure that maybe your shirt is pressed for dinner to finding my son a soccer ball that he couldn't find. Um, he collects soccer balls and we were in China and he couldn't find a good Nike ball for the national team. And our tour guide on the very last day holding a ball up for him as he got on the bus to head back to the airport. I mean, that's the kind of service and kind of connections that you get. Um, and you just don't get to experience that. I think with a run of the mill tour group or putting together your own itinerary you know i get that disney might not be the cheapest in the game when it comes to adventures by disney but you don't necessarily want it to be cheapest in the game when you're experiencing a once in a lifetime trip like to china Mm -hmm. or to germany or to italy you want to pay the little extra and get those things that you would not get on your own so it's so worth it it's you know that's what i tell my clients when we're talking about it is that what you're paying for is the adventure of a lifetime and then when you come back you know that no stone was was not turned on that trip. Mm-hmm. It's it's simply an amazing brand. It's one of those and, and things I think that, like, from... oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, go ahead. That's okay. No, I was just gonna say, like, you hear. So, like, I I think like the rap that it gets, you know, because you hear things like about like the hundred nine thousand dollar trip where you go to all the parks, like that gets. That That's gives a it a bad bad. rap because, <laughs> yes, yeah. and That's like an you, you think of it yeah. as, yeah, like you think about it though in in that terms, like a lot of and a lot of like, kind of my idea behind the the podcast is to kind of give it a travel agent perspective, you know, but like there are some adventures, especially of, some like, of the stateside ones, that are a couple thousand dollars a person mm-hmm. for an entire adventure. Yep, uh, Yep, I want to do the Wyoming one just because of that. Yeah. Right? It's very yeah. cost effective and I heard it's amazing, you know. Yeah. Yep. But but John, that hundred and nine thousand dollar one's on my bucket list. I would love oh to do that. Oh my gosh. Hundred and fifty percent. We need to get a group together. Can you can you like can you like have me as your camera crew? 
Oh, Can I that, be your camera crew for that? <laughs> oh, one day that'll happen. And I and I've read some I've read from some reviews from that trip that it's there's already sold out trips for that. They've already sold out some of the dates. I mean, that's crazy to me. But the fact that it has sold out tells you that Adventures by Disney is a great product. You I know, they're guarantee not just you going. the people who are on that have done an adventure before. Guarantee yeah. it. They're probably guarantee all. It. They know. They're probably all past. They're probably all past adventurers. Yes. Who know what they're going to get from they that. They do. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the other thing I think is important to to know about it is that you know, and I've heard this from some of my family members who interviewed me when I got back from a trip. They're like, "Man, why would you just want Disney in your face when you're seeing these countries?" You know, Mick, and I'm like, "That's not the way these trips are." You know, right down to the Adventures by Disney logo. There's very, it's very discreet or very done well when it comes to how they put Disney in there. Mm-hmm. Like you may watch a Disney movie when you're moving from one city to another in that Germany trip, and it's going to be you know something inspired like Beauty and the Beast or um, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a movie that is based on the trip that you're taking. You may say have that. You may have the kids getting taken from you by the the guide so you and your spouse can experience a dinner out and those kids may watch some Disney movies or have a little bit of fun like that. But it's not what you think it is when it comes to Disney being in your face this trip because that's not what it's about. It's about you experiencing the country and seeing the things that others um, were there before you and accomplished. That's what it's about. It's about really the experience of the in-country beauty. That's really what the brand is really about. And as someone who has done some of those countries, like I've done Italy, I've done France and stuff, but independently, like I can attest to the Sistine Chapel, wall to wall, I still hear in my head the Italian guards yelling, no photo, no photo at us. Like, so you're right. I think it's, you get that VIP experience. You get treated like royalty, as you said, Jeff, and it's, it doesn't have to be in your face it could be wow that is kind of cool walking down the street that this is where walt disney like was inspired by pinocchio but it doesn't have to like it doesn't mean that you're just going on a lesson about it it's just like oh Mm -hmm. here here you go that's a really cool little tidbit but it's more that experience and that adventure i love that they include the word adventure because i feel like you're going sometimes not even fully aware of what to expect which is actually awesome i love trips where i go and I'm just there to experience everything. Like, you don't have to necessarily plan everything. It's all planned out for you. Correct me if I'm wrong. And there, hasn't, on. there hasn't, been, hasn't been one trip that I've been on, Alyssa, where I felt like I was gypped of anything at all. Like, I come back, heart is full, new friends, mm-hmm. uh, memories for days. That's what those trips are about, you know, right down to your meals. I mean, 70% of your meals on any trip are, are covered. That's another thing that people don't account for when they're looking at the cost. You know, 70% of your meals are covered. It's generally all your breakfasts. You get uh, almost all your dinners. Lunches are generally some days on your own. But you want to adventure out. You want to find some of those little places and and explore for yourself. There's just so many great things to say about Adventures by Disney. Awesome. And the great thing about it is they're like the rest of the company. That brand was really affected during the pandemic. And they're now opening up like a flower as well. Because a lot of these adventures are back now. You're seeing the 23. I was just looking before this call. The 23 itineraries are double what they were for 2022 as these countries come back on board. And um, it's just nice to see that people are traveling abroad again. And if you're going to do it, why not do it with with a, with a brand like a, like Disney? Can I, can I ask you guys what, I don't know if you can do this, but can you read what's your top? What was your favorite that you've done? Oh, man. Location or experience on the adventure? Both. Why not do oh, both? Yeah, both. Why not do both? both. We've, done, we've done similar but different. Jeff and I have done some that are the yeah. same and some that are different. You know, I will yeah. say one thing. The river cruises are very different experiences than the adventures. So I've done river cruising with Adventures by Disney as well, and that's a very different vacation in, a, in just as amazing of a way as the land-based adventures. So, Mm -hmm. you know, land, Paris is always gonna have my heart. So of course I love London and France. Um, But the river cruising, I mean, sailing down the Danube, incredible. Getting to, you know, every day, you know, never have to pack or unpack your suitcase. Not that you have to move your suitcase on an adventure because Tinkerbell comes along with you on an adventure by Disney. 
and you leave your suitcases. That's one thing that not a lot of people know. You know, when you're on these experiences, you never really have to lift a, not really, you never lift a finger. You're just literally escorted and from place to place to place. And you know, as a travel agent, I thought before I went on my first adventure, yeah, right, this is gonna be crazy. I'm the planner, I'm the map. I'm the one who always puts these things together and leads everybody. How on earth am I gonna get up every day and be told, okay, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing. Like, I can't do, this is gonna be rough. But I've now been on multiple <laughs> of them um, and I'm supposed to be on one right now, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but oh my gosh, the ability to not have to lift a finger is incredible. You put your luggage by your door before you go to bed and the next morning, magically, it's gone. And the next time you see it, magically, is when you've changed cities or even in some instances, countries. And your luggage just reappears in your room. Not in the lobby, not on a bus that you have to pull it off of, but in your room waiting for you. And you didn't have to lift a finger. When you're in Venice and you get off the bus and you look at all the other tour groups and they're all getting their bags off of the bus and dragging them down the stairs and up the stairs because that's what Venice is. When the Adventures by Disney bus pulls up, it just, all everybody gets off and just leisurely walks down to a gondola and they get on a private yeah. gondola ride while everybody else on the other tours is dragging their luggage around. So I think location wise, it's super hard to pick one that's my favorite. My heart is always held by certain cities. So it's so hard to say, but I think it's important to know that the river cruising can be very different from the land-based ones and just as magical. I don't know, Jeff, what's your favorite? So my, my, I think my favorite experience um, is a toss up of a couple of things. And one of them is kind of funny because you're going to say that was the end of your trip, but it was a cool experience. So when we were in China, we, we done like a three hour tour through the Gumdrop Mountains of Gien, China. You know, and everyone's seen, if you've been to China, the Pavilion and Epcot went to the movie, it shows the Gumdrock Mountains and directly below it, you know. But we done this, like, three-hour boat ride through the winding mountains of the Gumdrock Mountains. That was, like, by far one of my favorite experiences overall. It was beautiful. It was majestic. It was an incredibly calm day. The weather was perfect. It was just an unreal experience. Um, that's rivaled by, and this you guys are going to laugh at this one, at the end, and Leslie probably can attest because I think she said she's done the Italy trip. At the end of the Adventures by Italy trip, when you're going back to the airport, we got on a boat and we took the boat right to the airport, you know, like speedster style. We were up there like rock stars on the top of the boat and you get to the boat uh, dock at the airport and you're expecting to get off and walk in the main. No, the, the boat docks literally in the airport. And you just walk off, don't have to grab your luggage, they take care of it for you, and you just walk into this airport right off of a boat, which was really cool. You know, I mean, there's so many other great experiences from the Great Wall. We already talked about Sistine Chapel. But I think my favorite tour overall of all the ones we did, for me, it was a combination of what we did, the people, the country was so beautiful, the people were so amazing to us, was the Germany trip. I absolutely loved the Adventures by Germany trip. Just It was my favorite, I think, overall trip of the whole I think I'm right there you with know, you. Of, yeah i loved adventures by disney i loved the places we went to um the the people that we were with are still some of my wife's and my my kids best friends today they talk to them all the time you, you get these connections with the people you're with but it was just amazing i mean that trip was a blast um minus a 1970s hotel room that i had to spend a night a couple nights in leslie will laugh at that one but Overall, it was just a really fun, great trip. I called you um, from Germany going, what yeah, is going yeah, she did. on with this location? Yeah, that, so, yeah that's a whole other story for another the heart call. Of the yes, I, I remember getting a call from Leslie. I'm like, she's in Germany right now. <laughs> so, But that was definitely a um, fun, fun trip, the Germany one. That would probably be my favorite one overall. But see, I, I can appreciate that about Leslie because, like, Leslie, like, hates the All-Star Resorts. Like, it, it's almost a running joke as as agents, right, that, like, you affectionately do hate the All-Star Resorts. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm this, I, always think of Leslie, I, I always think of Leslie when I see this meme. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yes, yeah, she loves this 
she loves the Grand Floridian. Like you, like she okay. Grows. I love I love the Grand Floridian, but my favorite is actually Four Seasons. If they could pick up the Four Seasons and move it to the Grand's location, but I will say, I think that. She, the Grand, might be giving Four Seasons a run for her money soon because she's undergoing a complete renovation, which is very, very needed. Yep. So we might be under a whole new level of fun once that completes. And I believe I believe, I sent you a picture in July when I was staying at the top floor of one of the DVC rooms and it had a vaulted ceiling and just looked completely redone. You're like, ooh, that's nice. So that's right. Yeah. Everybody loves a, yes. loves a pretty hotel room. You let the yeah. beauty of traveling. You want to you want to experience something that's so different from home. You know, you want to feel yep. like something is truly you know magical and special, and and it doesn't always have to be pretty and fancy. I mean, some of my fondest memories are walking through gardens. You know, in other countries, that's just the beauty of nature. Mm-hmm. But. There's beauty right mm-hmm. there in all of it. And speaking absolutely. speaking of nature and beauty, uh, our go- our friends and uh, agents Cindy and Nancy are actually in Cape Town, South Africa, as we speak. Um, and we'll actually throw some you know pictures and stuff like that. But go ahead and talk about that, Leslie. And of course, I've got one who's fussing a lot right now. But Sorry. so yeah, Cindy. So the funny thing about this one is that South Africa. I've always called that my dream trip. South Africa and Australia. They're always they've always kind of been some of my dream locations. Mm-hmm. Well, we we got a call not too long ago that um, it was our time to experience that trip. But I have a short stack right here. <laughs> There was no way I was going to leave this little dude um, when he's so young. So Cindy got the benefit of being able to take my place, and she chose Nancy as her travel partner. So they are experiencing, and they've done multiple ABDs as well, so they are experiencing the absolute wonder of South Africa. I know thus far they have done a penguin encounter. Tomorrow is a winery tour. They've been to the top of Table Mountain. We've seen some pictures mm-hmm. from that. I mean, it looks like they're having an absolutely incredible time. I'm trying not to have major FOMO. I'm trying not to be too green with envy, but I am. Um, but listen, South Let, Africa's let's, beauty of it. Let's, let's be truthful. It's not going how many anywhere. Times, how many times have you <laughs> called her? How many times have you um, called her? At least <laughs> once a day. <laughs> and not just call. We've been FaceTiming. <laughs> FaceTiming, hey ladies, what you doing? <laughs> Even one of my kids. <laughs> so is predictable. Saying, Bring me back a carved monkey. He saw those, you know, in Animal Kingdom, they have the little wooden carved statues. And he said, I want one of those. And I said, Well, Aunt Cindy is going to be in South Africa and she can pick one up there for probably a lot less money. So <laughs> he said it actually today. Did she get my carved monkey figurine? So. <laughs> I'm sure she's working on it. Priority. Um, but yeah, I'm so envious. That trip just looks incredible. And funny enough, the three of us are actually going on one of our other, you know, umbrella brands. We're going to be doing the Trans-Pacific sailing from Australia to Hawaii in 2024. So I'll, I'll get that Australia nice. part kept in with Cove. But uh, one of these days, I'll, I'll get out to South Africa. One of these days. But for right now, these ladies are living vicariously. uh, I'm living vicariously through them. And they're definitely having an incredible time. They they sent um, some pictures the other day that they both got Versace sunglasses. (laughs) They said the exchange rate is really good there and their money's going really far. And they were like, check it out. They were really, really pleased with themselves and their little purchases. And they said their guides are amazing. That's one of the great things about ABD is, you know, it's not just you you have your guide from the U.S., you have your local guide who's contracting in and working for Disney at that time frame, and then you've got these incredible step-on guides. So you don't even just have two throughout the, you know, Mm -hmm. the length of these adventures. You've got in each of these areas step-on guides who come on and give their historical information and you know, just overall info and guidance for wherever that is, that part of the journey that you're on. And they're incredible too. I still keep in touch with several 
I keep in touch with all of my initial mm-hmm. in, r- guides from the ABDs, but also several of the step on guides. I adore them. They're just this. And these are people who literally just live in the cities that you visit. They don't work for Disney. Mm-hmm. They're just stepping on as contractors. And they do. There are two that are at the top of my mind. One is from the London um, portion of the England and France adventure. And the other is from the Germany adventure. Um, and I, I think I asked Jeffrey, I don't remember if he had the same step on guide um, when you visit Dachau. But his name is, it's Michael, but it's Michael. Um, I don't remember if, Jeffrey, if you had him, but that man will forever, no, he will have, he is part of my core memories of that trip. He, he made history not just interesting, enthralling. You hung on mm. every word he said when he was going through the historical background and information of the areas that we visited. Everything from, you know, the somber grounds, the hollowed grounds of Dachau to, you know, other areas in Berlin and Munich where you just are like just blown away by the culture. Incredible. Such incredible experiences. Yeah. I'm so ready to. I, I, can't, I can't wait to take another trip. I really can't. I gotta go. Oh, I book one. Gotta well, I, I will I say that, I, like Leslie is responsible because my wife is an RN, and like I think you and I talked at lunch that day about how my wife just does not want to do a cruise, and now I have her wanting to do a cruise, or at least being open to the idea of doing a cruise. <sighs> Listen, so. I've never been a big cruiser either, but Disney does it very well. And the, you know what's cool about the mm-hmm. Disney cruising? It doesn't matter if you're traveling with a child, with children, families, or just adults. There is something for everybody. I've done cruising both ways with Disney. And I can tell you I had just mm-hmm. as much fun when it was just Cindy and I or Chris and I. A lot of people, if you follow Moments of Magic Travel, you know my best friend Chris you know, he came along and we were we were our own co-captains and leaders of our own little private tour on one of the Disney sailings, one of the first ones out back on the water after the pandemic when things reopened last September. Um, we had so much fun. Again, core memories that are literally just seared into my mind, just as much as the excitement that's building for my whole brood who are about to get on the wish all together now coming up this April for spring break. So it's that's the magic of these brands. Same thing with Adventures by Disney. You can go on an Adventures by Disney vacation that is one that encompasses everybody, children four and up, all the way through to adults 99 plus years old, um, to adults only Adventures by Disney bookings. So there are also mm-hmm. dates that are just crafted for adults only where you won't have any children as part of your group. And those are pretty incredible too. I've also done those as well. So it's it's such a great thing that they have something for everyone. Definitely a win. They do. They so do. word on the street is is Aunt Cindy still coming to uh to babysit the the brood on the uh on the April sailing. <laughs> she is. <laughs> She's, she is in my room. So my room is myself, Kobe, my daughter, and Aunt Cindy. And we put the boys in the connecting room. She is. And she. Oh, so boy. with Disney, you have to have an adult in every cabin. So, you know, me traveling mm. with as many children as I have, and I'm a single mom. So it's, you know, it's just me. Hello. So I said, Cindy, can I, do, can I twist your arm? Do you want to go sail with us on the wish for spring break? And she was like, do I? <laughs> Cindy is beyond okay, platinum sure. level on Disney Cruise Line. I mean, the woman's got to. She's ridiculous. 18 times. Yeah, I, I, it's she, I think when she gets on the, think when she gets on the Disney ships, they say hi, Cindy. They just they do. They, they know who they, she they is. really they legitimately so. do, especially the four core ships. I mean, she has she has wait staff that she'll make sure that each time if they're still in that rotation, she requests them. They know her. Yeah, she knows those ships. She is our cruise. Guru. Yes. Jeff and I are probably the gurus of Adventures by Disney. Cindy is the guru of Disney Cruise Line. I mean, she knows those yeah. ships inside and out. You can ask her the most obscure question about a location or something having to do with one of these ships. She will have the answer every so single I, time. I'm yeah. sailing on them. I'm sailing on the magic leaving Friday. And she was like, this is who you're requesting. <laughs> like, so I put what? in the request. She did, right? So she had wait staff that she wanted you to have. Yes. Hands yeah. down. I'm Jeez. not surprised. She's like, you need my team. 
But see, and then when you got on, you're gonna have to I tell joke them. Joke about this. I work yeah. with Cindy. I, I joke about this all the time. This is why you choose moments of magic travel because we're a family. We yes. each like know each other really well, and like we know the brand. So, bottom line, you know, if you're interested in booking package, right down here for a free quote, and that'll be it. So, any any final th- thoughts there, Alyssa? No, or, I'm just yeah, for... I'm so grateful, Leslie, for you to come on. I mean, John has been talking about getting you on for oh, months. Thank you so much for having. So me. we're so glad, and I, we know how busy your schedule is. So to really hear it from the master and the and our leader and everything, it's so so good. So thank you for taking the time to be here. Absolutely, we really do appreciate you. Incredible. Yep. So, oh, we're gonna have you back on again. We I know, can't wait. Let's that. do it again. Let's do it yes, again. I definitely. can't wait. You guys, we you were guys supposed are doing to incredible. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to do something in person at conference, but if you saw the last episode, uh, my boss kind of forbid me from going. Um, <laughs> and get, coming yeah. back from ne- neck surgery, and kind of like she kind of gloated about it today. She's like, "Well, you know, if you would have went, you probably would have missed more time." <laughs> oh, so, but yeah, Jeff, Jeff and I had planned Leslie to do an in person with you too, but. That whole hurricane, man, that threw a little wrench. That in whole hurricane just, that's just <laughs> oh my word. We planned for conference to look very different than it did. Um, <laughs> but by the afternoon, it was like the threads were just unraveling and everything yeah. was just falling apart. And I was going, okay, we do, okay, we're all right. We're okay. <laughs> you held it together uh, it wonderfully. It was- yeah, yeah. yeah. you are the rock. Yeah, but we you are oof. legit the rock. Well, that just means we're gonna have to make it extra special ten year anniversary next conference episode. We're gonna have to blow it out. Yes, hey, we, we, we 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 legitimately rocked conference like a hurricane. So. <laughs> you did. Well, you rocked I, it better see, than anybody because you held it out. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually, yep, I stayed put and and experience my first wild weather at Disney, like really wild weather. I think Go listen to our I think I was one of the last agents to leave. <laughs> See, editing the podcast last week, I was going to do like an 80s hair metal like thing where like uh, I'm not at Disney, but these two are, you know, cuz I've been doing like a bump now and like it's so. fun stuff. But anyway, that is going to do it for us. Thank you, Leslie. It was spectacular. Thank you. For Jeff, for Alyssa. <laughs> I'm John. (laughs) Have a great week. Take care, guys.